What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Happy Halloween! Ooh, today I am talking about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, Family is Forever, a movie that makes Rob Zombie's Halloween look like a competent narrative. Uh, that might be a little bit mean, but I'm sticking with my guns on that one. Uh, things that I like about this movie. I like that this shows that when you are the survivor of a slasher film, you are not going to be okay after that. You are going to be pretty messed up. Uh, I like that this shows uh, that uh, Laurie is a very different character here than she was in uh, the 2007 Rob Zombies Halloween. I like that. Uh, you don't get to see that a whole lot in a lot of other slasher movies. Uh, in John Carpenter's Halloween 2, I don't remember who the director of that movie was, but John Carpenter wrote the script. Uh, Laurie is basically in a fugue state the entire time. She's just kind of in shock at what happened. Uh, and it takes place like seconds after the previous Halloween movie, so we don't really get to see how she has changed from the events of the first one. Uh, and then uh, you have, like, uh, the uh, Friday the 13th movies, uh, whatever her name is uh, from the first movie, uh, we do see that she is uh, kind of scared uh, at the beginning of Friday the 13th too, uh, but uh, we don't really get to explore that a whole lot. Spoilers, she dies in the first, like, five minutes of Friday the 13th too. Uh, you don't often get a really good exploration of being in a slasher movie uh, or being in a Rob Zombie slasher movie is going to mess you up. And this uh, does not shy away from exploring that. Uh, I still don't think that Rob Zombie is the person to explore psychological trauma. Uh, he tried that in uh, his first Halloween movie, and I thought it was pretty clumsy uh, when he was trying to di uh, dive into the psychology of Michael Myers. I didn't think it worked very well. Uh, and then uh, the last half of the movie is just a truncated version of the first uh, Halloween movie uh, without any of the nuance that he was attempting in the first half of the movie. Uh, and if you have seen Rob Zombie's uh, first Halloween movie, uh, when I watched that, uh, I was thinking, okay, I have no idea uh, how he is going to do a sequel to this movie, because with John Carpenter's Halloween 2, uh, the thing that that movie has going for it, whether you love it or hate it, is the revelation that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is Michael Myers' sister. Uh, you find that out in John Carpenter's Halloween 2, but in Rob Zombie's Halloween, you find it out there. Uh, it's Sheriff Brackett is telling Dr. Loomis that, and so I thought, oh, so the one thing that John Carpenter's Halloween 2 had, you're taking that away and putting it in uh, the first Halloween movie. And uh, this movie does not try to be a remake of John Carpenter's Halloween 2. Uh, at the very beginning, the first like 10-15 minutes, it's trying to trick you into thinking that that is what it's going to be. Uh, but uh, so uh, we start with uh, Jamie, not Jamie, uh, uh, Laurie Strode walking down the street covered in blood. Sheriff Brackett finds her. Uh, she gets taken to the hospital and then she's there at the hospital and then uh, Michael Myers is coming after her, very similar to John Carpenter's Halloween 2, and then she wakes up, and it was all a dream. And I'm not sure if that was actually uh, what happened, or if she, if that was just in her head, uh, because uh, at one point uh, we are told that Michael Myers' body disappeared uh, in police custody, and so uh, I don't know if he disappeared and then came to the hospital, uh, or I, I think everything that's in that dream that lasts a good long time, like 10 or 15 minutes, I think all of that didn't actually happen. She's just imagining that in her dream. So, uh, like I said, the first 10 minutes or so, trying to trick you into thinking that this is a remake of John Carpenter's Halloween 2. And then she wakes up and it is a completely different movie. Uh, and, uh, like I said, I like the attempt at making Laurie Strode be a psychologically damaged individual after surviving the attacks uh, from Michael Myers. Uh, the problem is, uh, like I said in the first movie, everybody in that movie is a cartoon character. They are either cartoonishly nice and wholesome, like Laurie and her family were, or they're cartoonishly obsessed with sex, like Laurie's friends are, or they're cartoonishly evil, like everybody else. Uh, there is no uh, subtlety or uh, complexity of character, nothing like that. Uh, in this movie, Laurie is uh, cartoonishly, like, I'm a goth now, uh, I'm damaged. Uh, she might as well have Joker's forehead tattoo from the Suicide Squad. Uh, she, When she wakes up, she's got a butterfly uh, tattoo on her back. Uh, she has on her mirror a uh, wake the F up, and she's got an Alice Cooper poster, because if you like Alice Cooper, uh, you must be pretty messed up, and you must be a goth, right? Uh, I guess color me goth, because uh, I like Alice Cooper, but uh, anyway, she is now living with Sheriff Brackett and uh, Sheriff Brackett's daughter, uh, is it Annie? Uh, and the thing is, uh, this movie is trying to say if you survive a, a slasher movie, then you're going to be really messed up. 
Annie survived uh, the events of Halloween 1, and I didn't know that, uh, because watching uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 1, uh, Sheriff Brackett finds Annie, and she's on the ground, and she's been stabbed, and I thought, oh, she dies off screen, but she survived, uh, and she seems more or less okay, uh, which makes Laurie Strode out to be just a really awful person. Uh, she basically spends the entire movie yelling at everybody, cursing them out. Uh, she tells her therapist that uh, she hates her friend Annie because Annie has these scars on her face from the attack from Michael Myers, and she hates her friend because uh, these scars remind her of Michael Myers and her being attacked. And Annie seems alright, uh, so this really just paints Laurie out into being just an awful, awful person. Uh, but uh, as a slasher movie, this movie is really dull. Uh, we get a few attacks here and there. Like I said, at the beginning of the movie, we have a dream sequence where uh, Michael kills a few people, but since none of that actually happened, it doesn't count. Uh, and then Michael kills a few people we do not care about. He kills, uh, I think, three people at a strip club. Uh, he's out in the middle of a field where these people find him, and they think that he's somebody else who's been trespassing on their field and so he kills them it's all these people who have like seconds of screen time in the case of the people in the field or like a minute and a half of screen time in the case of the people at the strip club uh we don't care about any of them uh you look at any other slasher movie like uh the friday the 13th movie i cannot believe that i am pointing to that movie as a positive example of this you spend more time with the victims in that movie than you do here uh it's not until uh the last half hour of this movie when Michael starts killing people that we know. Uh, and so he, and also, I haven't even talked about Michael's motivation here. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, we have a flashback to when Michael is in the uh, asylum and uh, his mom uh, brings him a white horse toy. And then he says he had a dream that she was dressed in a, a beautiful white dress or something like that. Uh, and uh, they've recast young Michael, by the way, I believe, because young Michael from the first movie had a growth spurt. Uh, and uh, it's not this kid's fault, but I don't get creepy and sinister from him like I did the kid from Rob Zombie's Halloween 1. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, after uh, Michael's mom commits suicide, which happened in the first movie, uh, then Michael is like, well, I'll see her again. Uh, and uh, then throughout the movie, as a kid and as an adult, Michael is having these visions of his mother and a white horse talking to him. And basically, Michael wants to kill Laurie Strode so that the whole family can be reunited. Uh, and uh, weirdly, Laurie Strode at points also sees visions of Michael's mother, who she never even met. Uh, so I don't know how she knows what she looks like uh, or what the significance of the white horse is to Laurie uh, because Michael, his mom, brought him a white horse toy. So then when he's having these visions and there's a white horse, okay, that makes sense. Why is Laurie seeing visions of the mom and a white horse? I don't know. Does she have telepathy? Is there some kind of telepathic bond between her and her brother? Uh, maybe. Uh, this is about as silly as the Druid curse in uh, Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so then uh, Laurie, uh, like I said, she's a really horrible person. And I don't understand why Michael is killing everybody else in the movie like at one point he's just in the field and he kills some people uh why if your goal is to kill your sister so that your family can be reunited like why are you wasting all this time uh we find out that all of this movie takes place two years after the previous movie okay if Michael survived the events of the previous movie, where has he been for two years? Uh, Rob Zombie said that his first Halloween movie, anyway, was supposed to be more realistic than uh, the John Carpenter movies, uh, which are famous for Michael could get shot with a cannon and blown up uh, in the hospital, uh, and then he survived somehow. Uh, and in this movie, uh, I guess you get the feeling Rob Zombie's like, oh, these are going to be more realistic. And then at one point in this movie, I think Laurie says that she shot Michael in the face, uh, and somehow Michael survived. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how he tended to his wounds. Uh, you wouldn't think that he would have any medical training to do that. Uh, where has he been for two years? I don't know. Uh, but uh, this movie just tries to ignore all that. Don't think about that. Uh, just watch the cool kills that aren't really here. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the movie, I haven't even talked about Dr. Loomis. Wow. Uh, okay, so Dr. Loomis was probably my favorite part of Rob Zombie's Halloween 1. Uh, in this movie, he is so awful. Uh, he is even more exploitive than he was in the first movie. Uh, at one point, Sheriff Brackett says, I don't like you because you have uh, exploited this kid and turned him into a 
celebrity, and now he's come to this town. Uh, and the thing is, in this movie especially, everybody acts like Michael Myers being a serial killer is Dr. Loomis's fault. And while Dr. Loomis is horrible in this movie, I don't understand how they are pinning Michael Myers on Dr. Loomis. Michael Myers already killed people before he even met Dr. Loomis. And then uh, Dr. Loomis tried uh, to, uh, I guess, uh, rehabilitate Michael. And even after Michael killed that nurse, Dr. Loomis stayed with him for like 15 years. Uh, and so even though uh, you get the feeling Dr. Loomis started as, I'm going to make a, a career out of this kid, I'm going to be famous, that's how he started. You do get the feeling, watching the first Rob Zombie uh, Halloween movie that uh, Dr. Loomis grew to care about Michael Myers. And then in this one, uh, he is just so much worse. Uh, as soon as we meet him, uh, he is going to be uh, giving a uh, uh, press conference. He's written a new book about uh, Michael Myers, and he uh, tells someone, he says, go get me a cappuccino and make an extra spritzy. Uh, I'm not doing anything until you meet my demands. And he's just awful. Uh, and uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, more of him being damaged. Uh, you get to see Laurie is really messed up, and Annie is barely messed up, I would have liked to have seen like a middle ground between them with Dr. Loomis uh, that makes him feel a little bit more like a human being than what he does. Uh, and uh, like I said, everyone, like two or three people keep uh, blaming Michael Myers on him, saying, do you feel responsible? And I'm thinking, why would he feel responsible? Michael Myers probably can't even read at this point. He's just a mindless killing machine. He wouldn't know that Dr. Loomis wrote a book about him. I don't understand like why all these people are blaming Dr. Loomis for any of this. But uh, at the very end of the movie, uh, Michael has kidnapped Laurie, he's killed uh, Annie for real this time, and then uh, the police have uh, the building surrounded uh, and then uh, Dr. Loomis finds out about it and he goes there and Sheriff Brackett is upset uh, at Dr. Loomis and Dr. Loomis like runs past the police barricade somehow and goes in uh, to try to rescue Laurie and then uh, Michael for some reason leaves the building uh, to kill Dr. Loomis and then the snipers all kill Michael or do they? Uh, because if this had gotten a sequel, Michael would have somehow survived. And then Laurie comes out, and then this is where I'm confused. She grabs a knife, and I think she's going over to Dr. Loomis's body, like she's going to stab him. And then the police start shooting her. And then uh, we cut to this uh, somber cover of Everybody Hurts, uh, R the R.E.M. song. I don't know who did the cover. Uh, and then uh, Laurie is in a white room. Uh, it would have been better if we had White Room by Cream. Uh, and she is kind of creepily smiling, uh, like, oh, okay, she uh, sees her mom. I guess. Uh, and uh, I guess I should mention that even though we, the audience, found out that Laurie was Michael's sister in the previous movie, Laurie did not. Uh, Laurie finds that out in this movie, and that was kind of a slap in the face to me because I had to think, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess she didn't know about that, even though we did. Uh, so that's one of those things that, in retrospect, maybe they should have held that review, uh, or held that reveal, uh, even though we know that from John Carpenter's Halloween 2. If you're going to have that be a big uh, moment in this movie, you probably shouldn't have had characters discussing it in the previous movie. Uh, that would be tantamount to Darth Vader talking about how he is Luke Skywalker's father to the Emperor in A New Hope, and then Luke finding out in Empire Strikes Back. It doesn't have that weight. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed. Uh, yeah, I don't really understand what's going on with Laurie at the end. Is she going to become the next Michael Myers? Is that what was going on here? Or if they did do Rob Zombie's Halloween 3, would they back up on that? Uh, kind of like how uh, the chick who plays Annie in this, she played uh, Jamie uh, Lee Curtis's daughter in 4 and 5 of the original timeline, and uh, at the end of 4, she becomes a killer. And uh, it's like, ooh, she's going to be the next Michael Myers. And then in 5, they back way away from that. Uh, so would they have done that if Rob Zombie had gotten another movie? I don't know. Um, this movie does have uh, some of the highest amount of hey, it's that guy that I've ever seen. Uh, Octavia Spencer uh, plays a nurse in a dream. Uh, she's not in it much, uh, but this is pre The Help and pre Snowpiercer, uh, so I don't think people knew who she was yet. Uh, uh, Margot Kidder uh, plays a psychiatrist uh, in this. Uh, Weird Al has a cameo. I never in a bazillion years thought I would see Weird Al in uh, any slasher movie, but especially uh, a Rob Zombie Halloween uh, movie. Uh, also, uh, uh, 
the Bill Faberback uh, is in it. He has like two lines of dialogue. He doesn't even show up until after uh, Sheriff Brackett's uh, daughter is dead. He comes in and he's like, hey, we know where Michael Myers is. And I thought, what's he doing here? Uh, also, uh, Daphne from Heroes Season 3, she's here. Uh, there's a whole lot of characters where I'm like, oh, I recognize you. What are you doing here? Uh, and so that was kind of fun. Uh, that might be the only reason you would want to watch this movie is, hey, I recognize that actor from something else. Uh, honestly, uh, if I had to compare this to John Carpenter's Halloween 2, I know there's not much going on in that movie. It's not a great film. I think I prefer it to this. Uh, this movie uh, tries to do some stuff. It's ambitious, but I, I don't think that it's working. Uh, I think that it falls on its face pretty hard. Uh, so that is about all that I have to say about John. Or, I'm sorry, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Uh, thank you guys for joining me on this uh, journey of talking about horror movies. I know not all of them were super scary, but uh, this was fun, I guess. Uh, so I will see you guys uh, next month with some more videos. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day. Catch you later.